So, Carrie, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we've got the right size mask for our patient. So, we've already collected our um, mask in its packaging from the cupboard. Uh, and as you can see, just along the top here, we've actually got three different sides. These are three different templates, small, medium and large. Um, so, it's better illustra illustrated if I just use this one here. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to pop out to give us our templates, to reveal the templates for the mask fitting, like so. So you will now end up with something that looks like this. So the landmarks that we're looking for are the bridge of the patient's nose and the cleft of the patient's chin. Now, the majority of patients that we will be starting uh, non-invasive ventilation on will actually be mouth breathing and therefore will actually um, have slightly kind of larger landmarks to look for. So it's really important. Not all of them are, are breathing so beautifully as we have here with our, our patient. So we are literally going to present this up to the patient's face and looking for our landmarks to see which of the masks will fit. So you can see with the large, that goes beyond our landmark in this case, the medium, is looking like it might be slightly too big. And then the small in this instance would be the one that I go to. If you forget what the landmarks are, there is still a guide for you on the actual packaging itself. So um, that's handy. So we've determined that actually for this patient, we need a small mask. So we can now go and make sure that we've got the right equipment for that patient. We've got our right mask from the, this, the equipment cupboard. So taken the mask out of the packaging and inside the packaging, the other um, thing that you'll have is this resealable plastic bag. Please don't throw this away. This uh, can be used to store the mask, whether it be on a temporary basis, if we're taking the patient off non-invasive ventilation for any periods of time, you can just open it and pop the mask inside. Or say if you were transferring the patient to somewhere else, or maybe they were having it off if you're weaning the patient off, then it keeps it nice and clean um, and is, is kind of control of infection purposes as well. So keep that to one side handy. So the next bit is that we have uh, several components to the mask that are really key to understand. So when we first remove it from the packaging, first thing we need to do is actually remove this hard plastic cover from the foam, okay? Because uh, the last thing we want to be doing is putting hard plastic onto our patient's forehead and we have these lovely foam um, buffers that we can have um, on that uh, section of the mask. So we have the actual mask itself. There is the hard plastic interface to the mask, but then we also have this lovely soft uh, pliable uh, section that actually sits up against the patient's uh, face. We then have our harness, which will eventually sit over our patient's head and we'll go through how to fit that just in a moment. And then the other key component of the mask that we have is actually this um, articulated section to the mask here. And again, this is key in getting really good uh, mask fitting which in turn will increase your patient compliance with non-invasive ventilation. So there are two components. It moves backwards and forwards like that, but this top section also angles um, at the top there. So the key thing about this mask is that this line here needs to remain in a vertical position at all times. Uh, if this mask should tilt in that direction, then what we're doing is we're increasing the pressure on that point of the face, but we're also then allowing much more leak at the bottom section of the, the mask, which means that we wouldn't get the um, ventilation that we were seeking from the uh, circuit. And likewise, if the mask is tilted in that direction, then you're gonna end up with a lot more pressure on that part of the uh, patient's face. And then a leak here, which actually could end up leaking high flow into your patient's eyes. So, mask fitting ideally is a two-person technique um, because you need somebody to hold the mask and then you need to equally adjust the uh, head straps uh, for your patient. So, first thing I tend to do, Kerry, is just loosen off your straps a little bit. So you can see the top straps are connected onto the uh, mask here. Just very simple Velcro release system. And then the bottom section of the mask, again, 
just loosen them off just a little bit. Um, but you can see on these ones, they actually have like a, a ball socket. Um, those are really useful when it comes to kind of taking the mask on and off once we've fitted it, um, because then you don't have to keep undoing the straps once we've got them nicely fitted. So the other section of the uh, harness uh, for the mask is this section here. And this section we want to be kind of sitting uh, on the crown of the head here so that we can kind of make sure the straps are in the right place. So obviously please explain to your patient what you are doing in depth before you do that. Your patients, remember, are going to be really struggling for air. They are struggling to breathe. They will feel like they are suffocating. And so you introducing some plastic to cover their face is going to be the last thing that they want. So you need to talk to your patient and explain what you're doing. So, Kerry, if you wouldn't mind, if you were able to just hold that mask up to the patient's face for me, like so. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So it is then as simple as popping the uh, harness over the patient's uh, head. If you have lovely long hair, like our patient does here, you can just pop the ponytail through uh, the patient's harness and then just loosely bring round your straps. So these ones now, we just need to um, pop in. Are you okay with that connector there? Lovely, okay. So at the moment, Kerry is maintaining a lovely vertical line of that uh, face mask for me. But we can see now that we've got gaps on our harness. But the next step that we need to do now is make sure that we've got this head uh, support, forehead support is actually angled right. So I'm going to use the um, system here to, to bring it forward onto the forehead and then just make sure that that's sitting nicely. So I'm now happy that this section of the face mask is in the correct position. So it's now a case of us having to, um, to adjust the straps. And what we need to do here is we need to do this at the same time. Because the last thing again that we want to do is to tighten the straps on one side more than on the other side. Because again, what you'll do is you'll end up with the, the mask rotating and putting more pressure on one side than the other. So really doesn't matter which set of straps you start with. The key thing is that you both do it at the same time. Okay, so we're going to start with the top straps, if that's all right with you, the ones at the top here. Release your Velcro on that side, fantastic. And then if I release the Velcro on this side. So I have about uh, maybe two inches on the strap here, same. So if we pull at the same time, so we're about three inches and just slightly more. And let's just offer that up to the patient. So you can do this in stages. We can do stage one of the, the top straps and then come down and then we can come back and make small adjustments um, with the straps as we go. So if we do the same now on the bottom, so I've got uh, maybe about an inch and a half, two inches, yeah. So if we just slowly tighten, I'm probably about three inches there. So what we're looking for in terms of tightening of the straps is that I can still get a finger under there. We're not trying to pull this mask so tight onto the patient's face that there's a seal there. That's the last thing that we're trying to do. We're just trying to ensure that actually this mask uh, remains in position on the patient's face. So uh, the next check that we need to do, if we're happy with that, uh, I'd say possibly there's a slight uh, need for adjustment of the top straps because we can see that there is a slight kind of angulation of this top part needs to come in slightly tighter. So if we just see if there's an adjustment here that we need to make, that's it. And then maybe if we just tighten these straps ever so gently, wonderful. So that's now looking much more in a, a vertical position. So I'm happy now that we've got that in the right place. Um, so. Next, uh, just double check before we kind of uh, go is to actually do what I call the hairdressers check. So that is just a case of somebody running their fingers along and just checking that actually the straps are in the same sort of place. And I'm happy that that's, uh, those two bottom ones are and the same again, the top ones are in the same place. Um, if you can look from the back of a bed, Fantastic, have a little look, it's a lot easier to see that from behind. So we're now ready to attach our patient to, uh, patient to the non-invasive ventilator. 
We've already fitted our mask. We're happy with the mask fitting. We've already set up our uh, starting parameters uh, on our Trilogy machine and we have already connected our oxygen to our wall supply of oxygen um, here. So we're now ready to go. The machine is also plugged in to the power socket as well. So next thing that we need to do now is to reassure our patient, talk our patient through what we're about to do. So when we turn the machine on, there will be quite a loud noise um, of the airflow that's going. Um, and uh, then we will just simply be applying our oxygen tubing onto our um, face mask here. And from the moment that we do that, the patient is now receiving non-invasive ventilation. They are now receiving the pressure support that we have set on the machine for them. Um, but it may take a little while for them to get adjusted so we, we will stay with the patient just for the initial um, kind of setup, just to make sure they're, they're comfortable and happy. First thing to do is turn it on and it will make a loud noise. Okay, so because we set ramp, it's starting at much lower flows for us. So as I pop that in, you should now start to feel the flow from the machine. 